Minnesota. I'm here today on behalf of the City Council and our City staff to give you an update of the City and where we're at. This is the 2020 State of the City Report and on behalf of the City Council, the City staff, and all the City employees, I would like to provide you with the State of the City Address. Now this report uh, includes an overall synopsis of the city services, historical components, and factors that drive our economy, our business climate, and our quality of life. The City of Virginia begins a new decade with exciting and improvements and legacy challenges. The 1% sales tax became effective January 1, 2020. The authority given to the City of Virginia by the legislature establishes a revenue stream for a maximum of 20 years to fund the renovation, reconstruction, and expansion of the Miners Event and Convention Center, which is also known as the MEC. The city sales tax, the first of its kind in Virginia, was overwhelmingly approved by voter referendum. Our cities and towns were also granted taxing authority at last year's legislative session. So we aren't the only ones who uh, requested a sales tax, and we were in one of several that uh, uh, got approval for that. So the MEC is scheduled to begin demo and construction in the early spring of 2020. We're looking at sometime around May. The city recently issued $19,615,000 in U.S. general obligation sales tax bonds, which are Series 2020A, with a delivery due date and an expiration date of February 1 of 2040. This is for the sole purpose of funding the remaining balance of the Miners Event and Convention Center. Bonds will be paid through the collection of sales taxes in Virginia, and annual sales tax revenues are projected at $1.5 million annually. Our bond rating. On January 6, 2020, Standards & Poor's issued the City of Virginia an A- stable bond rating. There are several factors to be considered when assigning a bond rating. Economic pressures, unfunded mandates, fee increases by other governmental sources that require city action, debt services, enterprise funds deficits, cash on hand, and pension liability, which is called OPEB, are some of the examples. This Standards & Poor's report denotes that when the city's general funds and enterprise operations stabilize and funding capital outlay needs and debt service moderates, which is scheduled to do so in the next year or two, a higher rating is possible, even if the economy does not substantially grow. In addition, the outlook will improve when the anticipated reimbursement of $5.4 million from the Highway 53 Bridge Project is allocated from the state of Minnesota in fiscal year 2021, which will be taken from the local government aid account. Now, the city is currently working with the Iron Range delegation and other legislatures to accelerate the allocation of this $5.4 million to this year instead of waiting until fiscal year 2021, which would significantly help uh, our, our bond uh, rating, and it will also help our, our ability to issue bonds and, and reinvest our, that money into our investment portfolio. But overall, uh, the report says the city is supported by a solid financial portfolio. The 2020 city operating budget, uh, including revenue stream and expenditures that were approved in the budget, $27,094,409. That's our budget, includes revenue and expenditures expectations. Our projected revenues just from, from, from revenue streams, just from those that are standard revenue streams that we get from our various uh, areas is an amount of $16,821,505. So by balancing the budget, by using the 2020 guidelines, with the levy increases that were done, uh, at the end of this year, uh, actually at the beginning of this year, you know, the 2020 budget is fairly lean. And we have an annual anticipated surplus in the event of an emergency is in the amount of only $681,000. Now, 
And that's be up for a variety of things. Say if a piece of equipment breaks down or we need some additional snow plowing or, or something happens where it's, it's an unanticipated budget expense, this money will help cover the costs associated with that regardless of where it happens in the city. So where, does our, where do we get our, our revenue stream? It comes from local government aid. Taconite municipal aid and tax. And I'll tell you, our local government aid in the state of Minnesota, the city of Virginia receives five million nine hundred and sixty-three dollars in five hundred. I'm sorry, uh, five million nine hundred sixty thousand five hundred thirty dollars from local government aid, and our mining production tax payable to the city of Virginia is one million three hundred ninety-three thousand three hundred sixty-four dollars. That's a significant part of our revenue stream for our budget. We get some police and fire state aid to reimburse us for training purposes and for state aid to help in some law enforcement uh, training in areas. Uh, we, there, we, there's a county tax abatement uh, that we get, a uh, small one. Uh, we get money reimbursed from the school for our school resource officer, which covers the costs associated with uh, the services we provide to the school. Uh, PERA, which is a public employee's uh, retirement account, uh, the LPA, Public Employees Retirement Association, that money comes back in uh, uh, for purposes of that. License and permit fees, we get money from that. Federal and state grants, uh, those come and go depending upon what grants are available and how we compete for those grants and whether or not we're approved for those grants by a legislative body, which we have really no control other than you know pleading our case about what we need for our community and why these grants are important to the city of Virginia. And on behalf of uh, the city council and myself, I think our city staff has done uh, a yeoman's work, a wonderful job in acquiring as many grants as possible in order for us to help accomplish the goals that we have, uh, which will be outlined shortly for 2020. We get money from fees and fines, binding effects tax, some investment income from the investments that we have in our financial portfolio and miscellaneous donations and, and, from, and surplus sales. So if we have some surplus equipment uh, that, we, we, uh, that we no longer use, we want to recycle, we sell it and, and get a small uh, uh, revenue stream from that goes right back into the general budget. The Virginia Property Maintenance Preservation Code was implemented on January 1st of 2017. It has been mildly successful. A city officials continue to work with property owners and managers of substandard properties to ensure compliance. Correction orders were issued to those who have not complied. Properties deemed not habitable in accordance with the city code are subject to demolition. In one instance, a property was demolished by court order in 2019. And you can see our city crews working this year diligently to tear down some other properties that are not considered habitable and to re remediate blight and protect the health and safety of our community. Demolition is a labor-intensive, costly process. Public works employees are professionally trained to carry out residential and low-impact commercial property demolition. Costs include employer labor and equipment, asbestos inspections and removal, utility disconnects, and landfill disposal fees, which, which continue to rise and another increase leveled by the St. Louis County uh, for 2020. A portion of these costs may be reimbursed through the IRRB demolition program. Health, safety, and neighborhood revitalization are key drivers in our efforts to continue to mitigate and to demolish properties that we can't save. The homeless population in Virginia is on the rise. Bed and shelter space are at a premium. Economics, alcohol abuse, and mental health are key factors as we struggle as a community to address homelessness in Virginia. We have very few resources. The city has deployed trained police officers, firefighter paramedics, and EMTs to help identify, treat, and if possible, find temporary emergency shelter for those willing to accept help. The officers and fire EMS personnel try to keep apprised of locations of the homeless, whether they're encampments or individuals. We also rely on the compassion of our churches our volunteer organizations, and our residential and business population to report to us those who they think may be in crisis. Public transportation in Virginia relies on three sources, Arrowhead Transit, private taxi, and volunteer drivers for seniors and the physically disabled. 
We need to somehow find ways to improve the delivery of public transportation in Virginia by supporting additional outside funding for airhead transit and implementing other effective and innovative initiatives. Too often those in need of transportation are relegated to walking to and from appointments or shop for essential supplies in the harshest of conditions. That has to change. The city currently owns the Virginia Regional Medical Center building for which there is a long-term lease agreement with Essentia Health. The lease calls for Essentia to pay the remaining balance of our general obligation bonds, which expired on December 31st of 2019. In accordance with the lease agreement, the City Council is seeking a $10 million bond to be paid over the course of five, year, five years by Essentia for the operational maintenance of the facility. The City is also negotiating a potential sale of the hospital to Essentia. We also own Washington Manor, the senior housing building, which is operated by the Virginia Housing and Redevelopment Authority, also known as the HRA. There were some refinancing measures over the years to realize cost savings by taking advantage of reduced interest rates, but we still have a significant amount of, of debt on that property. Other lease agreements for space in the city-owned building includes a sexual assault victim advocate program, which is located on second floor of City Hall. They pay a $545 per month rent. The golf course restaurant, which is currently operated by lease by the company Northern Divide, pays a $3,000 per month rent for that. And the city also has capital leases that include the following. We lease some police and fire vehicles, emergency radios, which is a 800 megahertz radio for, uh, for uh, communication uh, from a regional communication perspective. Uh, we, we do lease some public works equipment and we have the Amoresco Energy, which is the LED lighting energy upgrades throughout the city, which once completed over a 14 year period, the city will, re will realize a significant cost savings uh, in, in, in our electric bill. We have long-term debt. We have some GO bonds, uh, which are general obligation bonds, which are outstanding, an amount, an amount of $3,650,609.10. We have a capital lease bond of $5,582,775. Uh, we have enterprise funds, and uh, here's where you talked about Washington Manor earlier. Uh, we have we owe $1,050,000 left on our, on our lease there. The water sewer plant, which we required mandated by law to, uh, to remodel and, and uh, completely re re restore. Uh, there's $14,529,739 remaining on that uh, long-term debt. And we have a clinic bond. Uh, the uh, or Essential Health uh, leases our clinic building, which is adjacent to uh, the Virginia Regional Medical Center. And there's $11,869,330.88 left on that bond. And that clinic bond, is, at least, is being paid by Essentia as part of their uh, lease of that capital lease facility. On uh, a copy of this entire city budget, which outlines our, all our expenditures, can be obtained from the city clerk's office by calling uh, Pam Bean, our city clerk, at 749-3579. That's our Pam Bean our city clerk at 749-3579, or by visiting our website. The budget is on our website, our interactive website, which is www.virginiamn.us, www.virginiamn.us. Three new ordinances were adopted in 2019, the vacant building registration ordinance, the fire certificate of occupancy ordinance, and the stormwater collection and disposal fee ordinance pursuant to Minnesota statute section 444.075. The first two are designed to improve public safety, track current ownership of vacant properties, and ensure that all buildings in Virginia are safe for occupancy. The third is a small step in the creation of an enterprise fund to provide needed revenue to maintain the stormwater collection system. Some of this infrastructure will need an overhaul when the street improvement projects move forward in 2021 through 2024. With input from citizens, landlords, and other concerned groups, a new rental co-ordinance may roll out by the end of 2020. 
Chestnut State rehabilitation and revitalization continues to be a challenge. Long established businesses continue to close without a new venture or a new venue to replace them. We are exploring all available funding sources and business incentive programs to assist existing business owners and building owners and to attract new business to the downtown corridor. It is a monumental challenge, as we all know. We see our downtown and how it's deteriorated over the years. Old building stock, economic pressures, travel patterns, the potential for steam conversions and shopping trends are some contributing factors we are trying to overcome in order to keep our downtown viable. A traffic flow study is on the horizon. With public input, the city will determine if traffic pattern changes are necessary to reconfigure transit routes surrounding the St. Louis County Government Services Building and the scheduled remodel of the Roosevelt Elementary School. The State of Minnesota did not approve a bonding bill in 2018 or 2019. We are hopeful that the governor and the legislature will agree on a bonding bill this year. Virginia is requesting $10.39 million from the bonding bill to help fund the new regional public safety building. If successful, the city of Virginia could have a joint police, fire, EMS ambulance service, and an on-site regional training facility within two to three years. To help promote this project and support police, fire, and EMS services, a grassroots volunteer organization titled Friends of Public Safety was formed. They meet at 6 p.m. on the first Monday of each month at the Klein Cooper Little Building on Silver Lake to help promote these public safety measures. All citizens are welcome to attend and are encouraged to join and give their input about this very uh, significant uh, uh, project that we are working toward. Virginia proffered a letter to the state of Minnesota expressing an interest in acquiring two state-owned parcels located at the intersection of 2nd Avenue and Highway 53. There's rumor that this was going to be used for the building of the new fire public safety building. That is not true. Uh, we want to purchase those two parcels, which is a prime property for economic development. We hope that we could come to an agreement with the state and acquire that property. We are currently planning property along 6th Avenue corridor for future business development and are seeking new business expansion on the 4th Street North, which is some, still some space available between uh, the, fam the family dental, Range Family Dental, and the uh, Co-op Credit Union. So that property is still available, and we have some interested parties uh, who would like to uh, uh, put a new building up there, which would increase our tax base. Uh, several acres of property are also available for mixed-use residential in Midway. We hope to generate new interest as Virginia and the other school districts build the academy model education facility along White Cedar Drive in Midway. The Virginia Department of Public Utilities administers electric, natural gas, steam and water services to the city of residents in Virginia. The Electrical Distribution Center or Department of Public Utilities serves in excess of 5,800 residential and commercial accounts and consists of a combination of a 2400 volt and 13.8 kV distribution system. The department operates a 30 megawatt cogeneration power plant and a 20 megawatt interconnect with Minnesota Power. The steam conversion program continues in 2020. The Virginia Department of Public Utilities reports that the program is on track to be completed by October 31st, 2021. 1,170 customers are mandated to convert. Our status to date is as of last month, in Northside, 125 conversions have been completed and 151 are still in the process and 178 have yet to apply. In the south side of Virginia, 457 conversions have been completed, 294 are in process and 120 have yet to apply. The area economy. The city's economy historically has been dominated by taconite mining or pellet and ore operations or related industries. This will continue to be the case for the foreseeable future. Mining is our main source of employment and revenue stream. However, we do remain committed to diversify our economic base. 
with new service centers, businesses, and business expansion. Virginia works with local and state government affiliates and enthusiastic volunteer organizations to help develop, improve, and beautify the city's infrastructure. Virginia serves as a regional trade and tourism center, complete with a strong retail business climate and modest growth in small industry. Although this retail business climate is, is, uh, is under pressure uh, based upon the surrounding communities, our, our business retail uh, uh, business is, is hanging in there. Our recent constructions in, in the past year uh, and completions of these are examples are the St. Louis County Government Services Center, a Caribou Coffee at Einstein Bagel, Tractor Supply Company, Virginia Carefree Living, Ken Waski Auto Plaza, Aldi, Verizon Wireless, Vertex Properties, Hobby Lobby, Up North Iron Range Clothing in the Mall, Champion Auto, the Martial Arts Academy, the old Century Motor Freight Building is currently being remodeled, uh, and uh, there is a lease in there now. Uh, uh, I think Husky Spring is in there, and uh, uh, so that's being remodeled. That's been uh, decimated and, and vacant for many, many years, and an investor has taken on that project and is making these improvements. Uh, Rockstick Properties at the Thunderbird Mall, uh, they're continuing to move forward with their phase projects. They hope to begin another phase uh, soon. A Northgate Plaza, Northwoods Construction, you can see their construction is moving forward with uh, remodeling that entire uh, uh, plaza uh, shopping area. And Northern Foot and Ankle has relocated and, and remodeled their facility in that business plaza. Remodeling construction investments to date by these companies that I just mentioned exceeds $35 million. New business construction is on the horizon for 2020. A full-service beauty salon and specialty hair care and small business will be located on 8th Street South. Four buildings on Chestnut Street were recently sold and hopefully will soon announce their business plans. Other business acquisitions from 2018 to 2019 are in various stages of remodel. We are hopeful that these new ventures will open this year. Virginia is a landlocked community with little or no room for growth. So it is imperative that we, as a community, take advantage of every opportunity. Despite our objections, the state of Minnesota closed Cuyuna Drive and Midway. The closing severely inhibits the expansion of a retail slash business plaza in this area. We are currently working with the legislative staff and a lobbyist group to help convince the Department of Transportation to reopen the southbound road re-entrance and exit from Highway 53 to Cuyuna Drive. By doing so, it will trigger the opportunity for this business expansion. The revitalization of downtown is moving forward. The City Council staff and the VIDA, which is the Virginia Economic Development Authority, the Virginia Community Foundation, the IRRRB, and Chestnut Street business groups such as Revive Virginia help to procure funding for building rehab, energy upgrades, signage, and, and utilities in the downtown area. The designation of this as a historic downtown as a mixed-use corridor is one of several initiatives that includes two theme parks and an improved foot and bike path travelways moving forward for this year. We're exploring other options that are inviting and attractive with an eclectic flavor for commerce, for tourism, and for safety. Construction to renovate and improve the walking and bicycle paths and replace the closed pier around Baisley's Lake begins this summer. We're currently working on the budget to make sure that we come within that budget. We received a $550,000 grant from the LCCMR through the state of Minnesota to help replace this trail that's grossly needed in Bailey's Lake. Uh, the renovation will include some path lighting, landscaping, new bituminous overlays, and other safety features that will also help those who live in uh, assisted living or in senior housing the opportunity to utilize a, a safe pathway to and from uh, uh, their destinations, whether it's a health care appointment or to the grocery store uh, around Bailey's Lake. Uh, the city is fortunate to partner with the Department of Iron Range Resources and Rehabilitation Board. The IRBB is an integral part of our ability to maintain and to continue to move forward with our development of our communities. Uh, we did uh, partner with them this year on a $250,000 pilot project 
to provide forgivable loans to businesses in the downtown corridor for energy and building upgrades. Personal financial investment is required uh, to access these funds by each applicant. And by providing the $250,000 seed money, a $50,000 contribution from the Virginia Foundation, and $50,000 and $50, in economic development levy bond sales raised from the Virginia Economic Development Authority, our levy of our bond, uh, raises this funding level from $250,000, which is a seed money provided for by the IRRB, to $500,000 for downtown rehabilitation revitalization. To date, the applications for this funding, applications actually exceed the available funding that we have. But as the full program unfolds, we hope to expand this opportunity citywide. Smaller grants of up to $5,000 are also available through the Virginia Economic Development Authority, VITA, Energy upgrade grants through AOA may also be applied for by commercial businesses, so the AOA grant money you apply for can be applied in conjunction with any grant money you get for downtown revitalization through VITA or the, through, the, through the commercial business development zone. This is a pilot project by the IRBB. If this is successful, it appears as though we're, it, it, it's, it's forming to be a very successful uh, partnership. There may be some additional funding available in the future to continue. Uh, not only down the downtown area, but citywide. Alternative travel routes to the downtown are partially complete. From our conversations with all of you in the community, we have gleaned the need for easy access from Highway 53 to the walking trails, to the shops, to the parks, and the lakes with, with clear and concise wayfair signage, directional beacons, passable roadways, pocket parks, minimal traffic congestion, and safe streets and access to health care. Grassroots organizations like the Community Gardens, the Rutabigger Project, the Farmers Market, the Iron Range Partnership for Sustainability are well-established and successful ventures. Whenever possible, we need to support the expansion of these organizations. Wherever possible, we need to support the expansion of many other places in this community. One suggestion is to establish a flea market concept in the summer months, open to areas of the city, Places to consider may be include surrounding the lot, uh, walking paths, the municipal parking lot, the Miners Memorial Event Center, the Klein Cupoletti Building, and other volunteer business spaces. In addition, the Friends of the Library work diligently to support needed education services, events, and interactive programming, and assist library staff with their mission statement. Children and adults of all ages are encouraged to participate. Friends of the Greenhouse refocused transformed and expanded the All Park Cart Greenhouse by growing sustainable plant life and edible garden foods. City of Virginia, our staffing levels are maintained based upon the need of the community and it fluctuates from time to time. But here's an update of our city services and what we provide. Our city employees, in public safety, we have 23 full-time police officers, four administrative staff, which includes a parking monitor, 26 firefighter paramedics, their combination dual role, five paramedics slash EMTs, and five administrative staff. We're currently operating six ambulances. Public works, 28 public work employees includes street, garbage, sewer, mechanics, and building maintenance. Our library staff, 12, one library manager, eight full-time, and three part-time personnel. Engineering, three engineering uh, employees, code enforcement, permits, plans, and inspections. Administration, we have seven working in the administrative offices. This includes one city administrator, one city clerk, finance and human, sources, human services resource manager, a certified public accountant to support staff. Our crime statistics, 2019, as you all know, I, I've seen emails to mine and I'm sure other councils have as well, and you're concerned about the crime in Virginia and the reports that are put out on uh, Wikipedia and uh, on Facebook and uh, all around the community that Virginia is, the, is a dangerous place for crime. Um, we disagree. Uh, we had some serious crime over the years 
but none unlike the other communities uh, around as well. Uh, a serious crime or a death as a result of a crime significantly in increases in, in the uh, statistical data. But this is the data that we have to date. These are based on facts and figures and documentation that can be uh, verified. 2019. Police Department responded to 11,767 calls. That's 11,760 calls for service. Calls by dispatch only. This is only called by dispatch 911. Not calls into the police department. Not people talk, stopping a police officer on the street. Not another person calling. These are just 911 calls for service for, through our police department. 101 burglaries, 654 disturbances, 143 domestic assaults, 80 physical domestics, 184 drug reports, 80 medical overdoses, 98 fraud complaints, 264 thefts, 34 fights, and 19 medical assists. Now, there are some part one and part two crimes that are collected from the FBI crime statistics, which we sent to them. Uh, they are not yet been finalized but they should be uh, con concurrent with and in consistence with the figures that I just provided to you earlier. Our fire EMS medical calls. Total calls by our fire department in 2019, 4,463 calls for service, 1,176 hospital transports, 2,763 911 calls, and 524 fire calls, which includes uh, fire alarm calls and, and uh, calls of suspicious uh, fire. Our major employers around the area, which really uh, runs our economy, what helps keep our community growing, what keeps our city operating, what pays for the service that we provide to all of you, aside from your property taxes you pay, our major employees around the area are U.S. Steel, Cleveland Cliffs, ArcelorMittal, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Essentia Health Virginia, Essentia Medical Arts Clinic, the AEOA, Independent School District Number 706, the Range Mental Health Center, Super One Foods, Komatsu, Target Corporation, Masaba Range Community and Technical College, and the St. Louis County Government Service Center. These are our major employers, and many other small businesses uh, contribute to uh, our economy as well. And if it wasn't for our small businesses, you know, we wouldn't be able to survive either. So both major uh, employers and our small business climate really are the keys to us to thrive as a community and be, be viable and keep our community a place that we can live and grow and send our kids to a good educated environment. Our city improvements for 2019 include the, the completion of the renovation of the surrounding Silver Lake. That's done. The UTV, ATV, snowmobile trailer route. Our Alcott Park Fountain Restoration, the Alcott Park Exhibits, the Alcott Park Greenhouse, our, many of our state aid road renovations. You may wonder why we picked those roads to be renovated and not some of the other streets in town. Well, we get money from the state of Minnesota in order to repair our state aid roads, and we can only use that money for state aid roads. So that's what we use that money for to, to improve that roadway system. And we can get a certain amount of money every year. It fluctuates from time to time. We try to hold that money in an account at the state level so when we get enough money, we can correctly do an entire roadway system. And you can see 12th Avenue, 8th Street South, and those kind of things. Uh, we've done that. And just uh, for 2020, starting in June of this year, the intersection of 12th Avenue and Highway 53 and 13th Street South and Highway 53, the, uh, the intersection there where you have the stoplights, the state of Minnesota is going to completely renovate those two intersections with new uh, uh, exit ramp roadways and new lighting systems. So that starts in June and it'll go on through October. There'll be a traffic delay during the tourism season, but you'll see that construction begin soon. And that's a state of Minnesota uh, construction project. Uh, we've had some Silver Lake community building and parking lot improvements. So what's going on for 2020? What are we doing? Well, some of the things we're doing is based upon what you as a community has asked us to do. 
through community meetings, through talking on the street, through the city councilors uh, meeting with, uh, through the coffee and conversations for all the city councilors meeting and uh, at the coffee shops. We glean all, all this information. We try to collect it all as best we can. And we try to determine what can we do in 2020? Where can we get the funding in which to do it? And when we do so, what actions are we going to take? So in scheduling for 2020, the following uh, uh, projects are moving forward. The Bailey's Lake Trail and Renovation, which includes a new trail for pedestrians and bicyclists, path lighting, landscaping, and a new lake pier. This trail will connect to the Mitsaba Trail Loop. It comports with the Virginia Active Living Project and the overall plan to reduce the carbon footprint, promote health and safety, and follow the guidelines that were established in the, uh, in the renovation of our new comprehensive plan. 418 Chestnut Street Park Apart with combined mining, mining and logging theme. That's going to be start. A new LED lights, stop lights, building lights and upgrades throughout the city. The Amoresco project, that's, that's already started and, it, and it's on the road to completion. Uh, the library ADA exterior upgrades for, uh, for sorry, ADA uh, American Disabilities Act. We make sure that we have uh, uh, access for those in need of uh, assistance, we're going to remodel the stairs, put up a new sign there. Uh, Pine Mill Court Park, we'll be getting some upgrades. The Miners Event and Convention Center, which is probably the largest project in the city beginning in 2020, will be breaking ground around May, we hope. And if so, that's what it's scheduled for. It'll be about an 18-month project, so that'll employ a lot of people and uh, should, uh, uh, should not impact uh, the residents around uh, the, the area uh, too greatly, but there'll be some construction noise in that uh, moving forward. Uh, the downtown development grants and forgivable loans for business upgrades continues in 2020. Uh, directional Wayfair signs, uh, we're going to be looking at those and we're going to be budgeting those, uh, implementing the improvement of that project in 2021, but the planning stages begins this year. Uh, the sale and transfer of city-owned hospital to a private health care group, We'll still still working with Essential Health for that, and so we're uh, we'll see where that goes. We shall have an answer uh, uh, sometime this spring, and we also are seeking ten point three nine million dollars, like I uh, outlined earlier, uh, in state bonding to construct the new public safety building. So, what are our legislative priorities for two thousand twenty, for this legislative session, in which we hope that not only a budget bill will be approved, but a bonding bill will be approved for infrastructures. From bonding, from the bonding bill, we are only we have one bonding request, and that's ten point three nine million dollars for the new public safety facility. This is a bonding request for the city of Virginia only. Although we have other bonding, uh, we other other legislative requests. This is the only request we have from bonding this year. In concert with the League of Minnesota Cities, the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities and Rams, the Strange Association of Municipalities and Schools, which is Rams. Uh, we are seeking, uh, in partnership, the following uh, changes from the legislature. Look, we're asking for more city street funding as a, as, a, as a rural community. The retention of local government control, in other words, no unfunded mandates by the state. Let us determine the course of our community, our zoning laws, what we need to do as a community to thrive and survive and not have these mandates come from the state of Minnesota that may have an adverse effect uh, on us uh, and maybe a, a good effect on someplace else. We want to be able to make our own decisions on that. There's some legislation for that. Uh, protect our local government aid, which is important uh, for us to maintain our the service that we provide. As early, I said earlier, we get about $5,934,000 right around there in local government aid for the fiscal year 2020. Uh, tax Sales tax exemption on construction materials, this is important. If we get this approved through the state of Minnesota as a group, any public infrastructure building that's built uh, for the good of the people, the construction materials, there's tax on that. It's a significant amount of money, particularly on larger projects. So you're looking at uh, uh, significant savings if there's a sales tax exemption on construction materials. Telecommunications and broadband. The city of Virginia still needs more broadband service, as does the rural, other rural areas. Uh, we need more bandwidth, and we're working at uh, with the with the band in which bandwidth uh, with uh, with uh, uh, Rams 
in the state of Minnesota in order to get some additional uh, uh, bandwidth for uh, our city infrastructure. Looking for some police and fire disability reimbursement. Those police officers that go on, on disability or fire in the line of duty, there is a law uh, on the books currently that provides for that, but there's no funding in there, so we want to make sure funding gets in there in the event that somebody goes on a disability and that uh, you know the cost associated with that is shared because this is a public service uh, a police and fire issue. Wastewater issues, water and wastewater issues, particularly when, when it relates to our wastewater treatment program, the unfunded mandates of, of having to add additional chemicals in order to meet the requirements of the EPA. These are unfunded mandates where we have to pick up the costs associated with that. So we're looking for some funding for that. We're looking at for some resources for some affordable housing. And we want to make sure that we have a housing policy that we can control that allows individual communities like us to adequately perform and find avenues to support goals to the development and preservation of housing opportunities in Virginia. We don't want the state to mandate that. We want funding for that, but we want to be able to make decisions on how, what kind of housing we need, where it needs to go, particularly in the area in Virginia where we are landlocked and have to use all our resources within our curtilage to accomplish that goal. Homelessness and mental health and the opioid crisis, uh, that's a big issue at the state legislature. We're on board with that. And the protection and the promotion and the support of mining operations. This is very important. Our, our way of life is under attack at, at, the, at the metro level and at the legislative level. And we as a community, all of us have banded together to protect and to promote and support mining operations uh, in Northeast Minnesota. This includes both ferrous and non-ferrous mining. Uh, so our social interaction within our community. You know, we have core service that we provide. We have services that we get from the mining corporations. We rely on our businesses and our large and small businesses to help us work, thrive as a community. But we also have to have amenities for our, for our citizens. We have to have opportunities. We have to provide and draw tourism to our community as well. So we're looking to partner with com committees, the Park and Rec Commission and the users, grassroots community members and city staff to enhance our community events both by providing more children and adult activities. And all ideas are welcome. The annual home boat and travel show, which unfortunately was canceled because of the COVID-19 virus this year, fills the Miners Memorial Building with vendors from the Iron Range and beyond. It's been a successful event for years. The public library and Friends of the Fur Library provide a wide range of year-round events for children and adults alike. New and updated materials are available in a variety of media forms. Summer programs are important through the library to help facilitate both adult and children education services and, uh, and, and, and arts and entertainment. Land of the Loom Parade, the Arts and Crafts Festival, is a marquee event in Virginia. With crafts, food vendors, and live music, this event is the hallmark of our summer season. The Alcott Park is a showcase for all our family activities. We're fortunate to have this park in our city. The successes of the newly renovated fountain, the repurposed greenhouse, the addition of wood carvings that honor the history of the park, and the ongoing renovation of buildings and picnic structures make this a regional and tourist destination. National Night Out is a community-wide event which spotlights, celebrates, and partners with each of us as a community to bring awareness and share ideas to promote public safety for not only our community, but for our children, and for our businesses, and for our health. The Dream Machine Car Club Show and Cruise Night is a resounding success. Every year we track vintage cars and people of all ages from across our own range. Chestnut Street is a buzz and supported by Chestnut Street business owners, street vendors, hamburger feeds, and back to the 60s music is again scheduled for this year. They're going to bring it back again in, in August. And so this is another marquee uh, event that we have to continue to support in Virginia. Uh, several other businesses and local craft boutique shows are periodically scheduled at the Miners, the Klein Cupoletti, the Ridgewood Community Buildings, and the Thunderbird Mall. We hope that these craft shows continue as the summer moves forward. Uh, the city is seeking input from Revive Virginia the Virginia Community Foundation, and volunteers from ambitious, ambitious residents. We need 
of volunteers and business owners to help organize a weekend winter carnival event as a finale to the Festival of the Trees. This Festival of the Trees is growing more and more every year with the parades and the, and the, and the sleigh rides and the children's activities and, and the family activities. We want to expand that. We need to help uh, uh, this, the Festival of the Trees grow and prosper. As we have with the summer events, we want to have a really nice winter event. And there are many ideas that have been shared by you and the committee and the citizens. Children's snowmobile races and sled dog rides and snowshoe races and snow castles and turkey bowling and sculptures and sleigh rides and scavenger hunts and ice golfs, demonstrations by police and fire on Bays Lake, or just some of these ideas that we'd like to work for and maybe have expand that event that we have with Festival of Trees uh, for uh, this year, for this winter event. So we encourage you all you know, to, know, to let us know and we'll uh, facilitate a meeting and try to get this going to expand those services. There's a lot of things going on in the city of Virginia. I tried to just give you a small synopsis. We as a, a council are, are, are trying to work hard to, to address the issues that you have. You know, if you do have any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact us. This is, uh, we work for you. We want to make sure that we're doing the right thing, that we're, 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 we're right navigating the ship or with the oars in the water or whatever analogy you want to give. We need to do what's best for the city, make decisions what's in the best interest of the city, and we need direction from you moving forward. We, that's what we're elected to do, is to provide those services that you need and expect. So in conclusion, although solutions and priorities may differ, our challenges and goals in the city of Virginia are not unlike those of other small communities throughout the United States. What matters is, what do we do about those? We are driven by common values. We have been partners in health and welfare. We are a community of optimists. We don't want pessimists. We want to be optimists in our community. We're committed to building trusting relationships, promoting our way of life, and embarking on a path of making long-term investments and meaningful growth for our future generations. Challenges still exist. They always will. Successes that we've had in the past are incremental, but effective. This is our city, the city of Virginia. Let us take pride in our accomplishments. Let's work together to overcome our deficiencies. Let's engage each other to find solutions and strive to provide ourselves and our children a better and healthier and safer place to live and work. I wish you all the very best in the coming year in 2020, and we will be working hard to affect change for the, for the good of this community. Thank you.